A barcode is a mysterious looking pattern of lines that you find on a product and that pattern of lines appears to contain a lot of information about the product that it's printed on and in this video we're going to take a look at how that works. The first kind of barcode was made using Morse code. So Morse code is obviously this, this code uh, that, that consists of dots and lines which you can use to communicate information using light signals or sound, uh, sound signals, uh, stuff like that. But some guy came up with the idea uh, which was let's take this string of dots and lines and stretch it vertically because then I have a code that I can print on a piece of paper uh, that'll be much easier to read for some sort of scanning device than a very thin line of dots and, and lines because you have to realize if you have a thin line of dots and lines and you have a scanner scanning it like that it's very easy for the scanner to get off track whereas if these lines are very wide if they're you know a barcode then it's nearly impossible for the scanner reading the information uh, to get off track. Now modern day barcodes are not based on Morse code. Depending on what kind of barcode you have, because there are many different ones, I've got a Wikipedia page in front of me on this monitor right here and it contains a whole list of all kinds of different barcodes that, that are out there and they all have different encoding schemes but what they all have in common is that they use um, certain patterns of lines and spaces that correspond to certain digits or characters. For example this right here is a list of uh, patterns that correspond to digits in the code 39 type barcode. But there are not just digits and characters in barcodes. There are also lines that tell the barcode scanner this is the left boundary and this is the right boundary of the code or this is the center of the barcode. Stuff like that too. Right, so that's how the information is encoded in, the, in, in this barcode. Now let's see how they're actually read by a scanner. So the most popular type of way to read a barcode is using a laser scanner. So the idea of the laser scanner is simple. We have a laser and the laser moves over the barcode horizontally. And then we also have a light sensor positioned right next to the laser. And that light sensor measures the intensity of the light that is reflected back towards the laser. And so when the laser beam hits a black bar or a black line, very little light is reflected back to the sensor. And when it hits a white space, a lot of light is reflected back. And that way, as the laser moves across this barcode, the intensity of the light reflected onto the sensor changes. And then a built-in computer that is inside the barcode scanner is able to take these certain patterns of lines and translate them into the right digits and characters. Now in the simplest kind of barcode scanner, you actually have to move the scanner over the barcode by hand. You have to do it manually. I've had to do this. I had a video recorder a long time ago, and that video recorder had a remote control and it had a bunch of barcodes in the back of the manual and then if you wanted to configure the settings of that video recorder you had to take to take this uh, remote control which had a barcode scanner on it and scan the barcodes in the manual and then you could send send the information to the video recorder and that would adjust its settings the problem was that it had a uh, barcode reader that you had to move across the barcodes manually so you had to move it at a very consistent speed or it wouldn't read the barcodes properly and that was very difficult to do. <laughs> Modern day barcode readers or more advanced models have a laser that automatically scans back and forth over the barcode at a rapid speed so that you don't have to worry about scanning over the barcode manually. The most modern way of reading barcodes is using cameras because these days we have software that is able to analyze an image very well. So what we're able to do these days is we can simply take a photograph of a barcode. The computer will then analyze this picture. It'll see what the barcode is and it will analyze this barcode and figure out what it is. So that's the newest way of scanning a barcode. It's slightly slower often than a laser scanner, but it works very well. All right, so what happens once the barcode 
is red. So we have scanned it, we have successfully converted this pattern of lines into a number or a string of characters or a string of characters and numbers. Now what happens, right? Well, this number, let's just call it a number, is sent to a computer. And that computer has a certain database on it. Maybe the database is not in this computer, maybe it's on a server. Most likely it's on a server or it's on the internet. The computer will now take the number that it's received from the barcode scanner, which is the article number, and it will look for that number in the database, and it will probably find a product with that number. And then in that database is a whole bunch of information, all kinds of specifications about the product. Maybe there is even an image of the product in the database. And then the computer will display all of this information on the screen, for example making it seem as though all of this information is stored in that little code on the product. But really what's happening is the, co the, the barcode on the product only stores a relatively short code uh, that points to a certain location in the database. And in that database, that's where the, the information about the product is located. Now, the fact that a barcode itself doesn't contain much information doesn't mean that there are no barcodes that do contain a lot of information. So we do have two-dimensional barcodes as well, or which are also referred to as matrix-type uh, barcodes, which look like this. So uh, there are many different kinds of them. There are even ones that use collars as well, and they can hold a lot more information. And that's obvious, right, because an eight-line barcode can store eight bits of data and an 8x8 matrix can store 64 bits of data. So we can store a lot more information in one of these matrices. A very popular kind of matrix barcode is the QR code that, that you can scan with your, with your phone. The disadvantage of such barcodes is that we need more advanced, expensive equipment to decode them, and that it often takes a little bit more time to decode them than a, a regular linear barcode. So there you go. Now you know a bit more about what barcodes are and how they're used to retrieve product information. I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course thank you for watching.